Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, we're still getting people coming in, so the number is slowly increasing. So I will speak slowly until as many people can attend as possible. Anyway, this, uh, the, this webinar is uh, streaming online on YouTube, uh, live, and it will be recorded. So if you miss parts of it, you can always watch it later. Um, so welcome. Um, this is very exciting to be doing this presentation. It's very exciting to be with you tonight. And we are very touched by the amount of people that registered and the amount of interest in the project. Um, revealing, recording, reflecting is a research, collective research project. It's a speculative research project that we started just now. I mean, just now. We're launching it today, uh, tonight. And I am very honored to be with such wonderful um, team of researchers and like sub researchers and community of people interested and, and, and invested in this project. Um, we're going to try and do our presentations. We're going to present um, each one of us our panels um, in, in like 10 minutes. So we're going to be very brief. Um, but the project is uh, really um, uh, kind of complex. Uh, we started it with this idea of doing a research where everybody can contribute to because we did not want to be the authority on this project. We wanted to open it up and discover it and collaborate with as many people as, as possible. Um, we are launching it in a kind of experimental way as part of an exhibition. So it's kind of a place, the exhibition is like a platform for research, for uh, editorial. So we look at it together, we contribute, we add that the exhibition grows. And in the end, we, we make a publication. And we hope that the publication is not a definitive publication, but a start of a, of a, of a longer and more publications to come. Um, so we want to retell and record the work of untold stories about women graphic designers, calligraphers, typographers, and illustrators from the region. Women often are not featured as, as much as they should be, and certainly not in the region. But as we started this project, um, we discovered even more. So it's a, a team of women writing about women, um, but we will welcome, you know, guest men that want to contribute, we will let them in for a change. <laughs> We're not exclusive, it's an inclusive project. Um, so the, the, like I said, the exhibition is, uh, is, a, is one thing. And the other thing that we, um, we are very interested in is having these, these panels and these presentations and these discussions. And um, as four researchers, we each chose one theme we would like to elaborate on. And of course, you know, we're only four. And if we had, you know, 20 people, we would have 20 different topics. So I will start by introducing my, my you know, the key research team. Um, uh, my name is Huda Abi Fares. I'm the founder of the Khat Foundation in the Netherlands. And I've been working for many years in design and in typography and doing, and I believe that collective research is really important and really needed. It has, it has been my practice for the past 20 years. Um, and it comes with challenges, but it also, you know, is the best way to maybe increase a little bit your stack of enemies, but it certainly increases your stash of good friends and long, long term friends. Um, because when we go into this fight together to make something, we become, we bond. And I have made many good friends over the years that way. So I'm very excited about the new friends I will make on this project. Um, Dr. Yasmin Nashabe Tarhan is a professor at the Venus American University. Dr. Bayesh Hab is a professor of design also at the American University in Cairo. And Sukaina Hashem is the creative director of Shape, which is a design studio in Morocco. Um, I will in, they will introduce themselves a little bit better. So we, we just, for, for the sake of brevity, um, you can read their, um, their bios um, on, the, on the post. Um, the research, just to give you an idea, what we thought we'd be, we would be doing is to have four themes, as I said, and then each theme will become a kind of panel discussion and presentation. And there's also guests on it. 
that will also talk about different, you know, this topic from different angles. So the first one, this one is an introduction of the whole project. Uh, the one after that will be uh, about visual storytelling about women by women, moderated by Dr. Uh, Yasmin Taran. Uh, then the second one uh, will be moderated by Bahia Shab, and it's Ladies of Letters, Crossing and Connecting Generations. Um, the third one will be Image Making Behind the Lines of Engaged Graphic Design by Sukena. Uh, Hashem. And my last and the last one is mine uh, before the concluding panel uh, would be women designers in diaspora navigating multiple identities and practices. We're going to present each one of us um, her panel a little bit better. So this is about me in, in, in brief, uh, what I do, where I studied and what I do. Uh, I will introduce Yasmin a little bit better this time. So she's Associate Professor of Design and Art and Design History at the Lebanese American University in Beirut. And uh, her dis interdisciplinary research cuts across the fields of visual culture, gender politics, photography, and design history with a focus on Lebanon and the Middle East. And she will talk about um, her work a little bit further. Uh, Dr. Bahia Shab is an artist and an activist. She's also um, won many awards. She's a TED Senior Fellow. She's got the Prince Klaus Award, the UNESCO Sharjah Prize for Arab Culture, one of the first given to women. And her latest publications are many, but the one that concerns us the most is the history of Arab graphic design, which is the first um, history of graphic design on, by, on the graphic design in the Arab world to come out. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a, a valuable source, and I hope that she will make more books in the future. Um, Sukena is a Moroccan designer. Uh, her work in design and culture aims to create social and system change. Um, she has been one of the founders of the Casablanca Design Week, and she's done a lot of um, fantastic work activating the community and making a design even more, um, have more presence on the, on the Moroccan scene. Um, she will talk more about herself as well later. So the rationale of the project is that, of course, you know, with social media that we have, there's, there's always, um, and especially with Instagram, it's, we see a lot of people posting on design, posting about their work, but posting also collections and historical things. So there is a, a very clear interest from everyone in the, in the region to share and to show what is happening, in the, what happened in the past, their favorite things. So there's always collections. There are always things that they call archives. I would like to call them collections because archives require a little bit more than just a set of images. But I love the, the initiative, and I think that's very inspiring. Um, there's, of course, um, not many platforms to exhibit graphic design, and graphic design is really difficult to exhibit in the first place because often it is connected to a client. So if you take it out of its context, it's sometimes tricky. So um, this is just a slide of a few. This is the work of Bahia, actually. Um, uh, of an exhibition that I did in the US, just kind of introducing graphic design from the region to an audience that only sees, you know, like Islamic art and traditional stuff, but they don't see what is happening as contemporary design. And so it's important to have these slides. So this is some of the work from the exhibition. There's some there I show in this presentation only the women designers in the exhibition, and they are kind of almost 50-50 women designers and men designers. Um, so this is some examples of typographies. This is the work of Shavat Trabusi on publication design, etc. Um, of course, there's not also not too many publications on design from the region. And Bahia, like I said, her book is a valuable starting point. She co-authored it with Haytham Nawar, her colleagues at the American University in Cairo. Uh, we publish, and um, one of the things that I do is also forgot to mention is that I'm also a publisher. Uh, and Khatbook publishes specifically on design and visual culture from the Middle East. So we have been working on series of books and monographs, and we, most of our uh, topics tend to be men. So that's also another in, reason why we should make this publication and why we should start this research. Okay, so I will skip this part. Um, so this is kind of the outline of the project. 
And now I'm going to give the floor to Yasmin Ta'an to talk about her panel. So we're going to go by panel and then tell you a little bit what we're going to do and hopefully get you excited to join our campaign. So the floor is yours, Yasmin. Thank you. Thank you, Huda. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, I'm so happy to see all of so see familiar names as well. Uh, it's really nice to have you today with us to give us this opportunity to uh, introduce our panels. How long do we have, Huda? 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, 30? <laughs> Wait, 15. Okay, so, um, so my panel is on visual storytelling about women by women. And so uh, before I start introducing my panel, I wanted to uh, briefly contextualize Arab feminism, if I can, in a few minutes, or oh, well, image making and storytelling in three uh, points that I will uh, address. So first, feminism is not new in the Arab world. Feminism, or Nasawiya in Arabic, is a term that was not commonly used until the mid-1960s, but um, uh, uh, Arab and, of course, Iranian women had been displaying prototypes of feminism way before a term for feminism even existed in their language. Uh, long and heated debates by women about women issues circulated in the rising press of women's journals and women biographies since the mid 19th century. The uh, feminist Arab movement started to officially develop at the beginning of the 20th century when in Egypt, a large group of militant women took the streets to demonstrate against colonial British uh, control. So we can say that the second wave uh, feminism started when women disagreed with uh, Qasim Amin, uh, uh, the book that he has written, The Liberation of Women, uh, towards the end of the 19th century. Um, so Amin, the so-called father of feminism in Egypt, highlighted the importance of educating women in order to educate better sons to build a nation. This was according to Leila Ahmed, who strongly criticized Amin's uh, androcentric vision, not feminism. So I just wanted to bring this up. Uh, se my second point is that the idea of uh, using images to call for change by women in the Swana region, advocating for uh, equal rights and liberation is not new. Um, back in the 1923, uh, the well-known Huda Sha'rawi and Saiza Nabrawi staged their unveiling at the Cairo train station. This scandalous event was not about the veil as much as it was about women resisting the ongoing control of their dress and behavior. Sha'rawi and Nabra Nabrawi uh, seemed to recognize the centrality of the image and its circulation in print media in the formation of gender identity politics. And that's what, why we're interested in this. Their act underscores the, inter the interplay at that time between activism and the visual media. My third point before I introduce my panel is that the practice of women telling stories about other Arab women is not new. Uh, in this book written by Marilyn Booth, Booth uh, May Her Likes Be Multiplied, um, uh, Booth compiled women's biographies uh, of other women that circulated in the Egyptian press at the end of the 19th century. Early Arab feminism is presented in the effort to collect stories by and about Arab women, rescuing other Arab women's stories by presenting them as hero heroines. Um, stories about the 7th century Arab female poet Al Khansa and Zenobia, the ruler of Palmyra, were recounted. There's also a Lebanese intellectual in Cairo, Meziadi. At that time, uh, she wrote her own autobiography by writing the biographies of three other Arab women, Aisha Taymour, Werdal Yazigi, and Malak Hifni uh, Nasif. So circulating their text in print media was a way for women to assert themselves within a collective narrative that underlined their gender sub subject uh, positions in ways that allow them to envision themselves as role models for other women. So what's new today, or what are we gonna address uh, on this panel here? Uh, first, we need to acknowledge that there is a need for further feminist interventions in the Suwana region in advancing not only image production, but also research and writing on graphic feminist women. 
Now, what what do I mean by graphic women? So I uh, I borrow this um, term from Hilary Shute. Uh, and so basically she used it to de designate Bede East or adult comics female artists. I use the term in this panel uh, in a more inclusive way. So I am including all women who design images that convey stories that will be, we are interested in images that tell stories, not necessarily comics. Um, so the visual stories that will be recounted are not about heroines, nor goddesses, nor religious historical figures, nor royalties or stars. They are about real women's struggles against being alienated and marginalized, against injustices, sexual harassment, against colonialism and the abuse of power, patriarchy being part of it. So the panel will focus on how young emerging and established graphic design uh, or graphic women in the Swana region are advocating uh, for change. Um, I am um, being careful with using Arab because we have, um, I have a panelist from Iran. I'm happy to have a panelist from you know, Iran. That's why you know, I'm using the word Swana uh, region. Um, so by fighting the abuse of power under a patriarchal authoritarianist uh, order, they do this by negotiating their identity, their civic rights and duties through their individualism and creativity. Um, through their explicit graphics, women from the region, a young generation of computer savvy and a dynamic growing group of creative talents are giving voice to the marginalized, to marginalized communities. Connecting print with digital media, image making to politics will lead the discussion on this panel. So the panel will shed a light on the different ways notions of identity, power, and feminism intersect with visual production while bridging the personal with the political to develop stories that confront li uh, li uh, li lived situations. Uh, it, it offers a platform to review events with a feminist perspective, productively pointing to the female subject as both an object of looking and a producer of looking, while provoking us to think about how women as both looking and looked at subjects when situated in particular times, space and histories produce different narratives and framing of events. The panelists on the women telling stories uh, about, uh, uh, about other women will be revealing, relating, and reflecting on a diverse of group of women from uh, South uh, West Asia and North Africa. For example, my first the first panelist on the panel will be Dr. Azade Fateh Fatehrad. Uh, she will share with us the story of Sadiqe Daula Tabadi the archive of Sadiqe uh, and the Zaban i Zanan magazine. Fatirad is an artist and curator herself based in London. Her research and artistic practice focus on gathering information and generating new imagery in response to archival material. She will present her, her sto historiographies, the feminist print matters, an ongoing research related to the role of print matters in early feminist history that shaped and echoed the feminist movement in the Middle East. The panel will also explore the different ways a selection of Arab graphic women revisited their pasts, retraced events, and repictured them. Uh, in her presentation on Nora Zaid's stories in Heliopolis and uh, beyond, Hala Elhani will focus on Zaid's visual interpretation and the way she weaved her own uh, experience of the city with oral history, interviewing an architect, a heritage expert, and a, an Egyptologist and her grandmother on their experience of the same city. So she interviews four other women about uh, uh, the, uh, their experience of Cairo. And then she recounts the story in the illustration. So Nora makes the past, present, and future visible simultaneously in her mental as well as material images of Cairo. 
Um, Elhani, our second panelist, is the co-founder of uh, Mobius Design Studio. She is currently assistant professor in the visual communication department at the American University of Sharjah. The images discussed on this panel are produced by women who are provocative, political, and experimental in diverse ways. Their work falls across a range of controversial subjects with an aim to break boundaries and establish change, thus often subject to direct or indirect censorship. Most, if not all, uh, work by women discussed here tell, his, tell visual stories and that sets a visual language in motion. Uh, and sometimes uh, against uh, in motion with or and sometimes against the verbal in order to embody individual and collective experience to put contingent selves and histories into form. The panel investigates concerns relegated to the silence and invisibility of the private particular, uh, particularly centered on issues of identity, politics, memory and sexuality. Looking at these images, we are interested in how the work of self-interpretation uh, is visualized. This form of expression, communication, the art of crafting words and pictures together into a narrative includes images that claim political resonance to our contemporary lived experiences. When images circulate in the media, they tell stories. In their high, wide circulation, they present an opportunity to visualize non-normative lives of women in an aesthetically engaged format, shifting from the conventional to the political. They offer a space from which to criticize the pressure, uh, the pressure to conform to normative conventions set by society and present a platform to address unspoken issues. It, all, it is also an opportunity to prioritize women's issues that are seen as secondary by many Arab countries. In her presentation entitled, We Tell Ourselves Stories in Order to Live, Sahar Khraibani brings forth the fascinating work of Christina Ati, Rawand Isa, Leila Abdelraza, and Tulip Hasbar to address how these four women subvert language in order to create visual narratives that challenge taboos around the world, the role of women and women's sexuality in the Arab world. Sahar is a writer, designer, and educator based in New York. She currently teaches at Pratt Institute in New York and is working on her forthcoming collection of essays. Her work has been ex exhibited as part of uh, group shows in Berlin, New York, Los Angeles, Beirut, Cairo, and Abu Dhabi. Women Telling Stories About Women is about establishing a line of feminist graphic narratives that intervenes with other field of current concerns transcending women issues by addressing issues related to racism, migration, the right to citizenship, among many other social and political issues. Yet our focus remains on the enabling role of the visual in self-articulation and process of identity formation but also negotiating the place of women within society. These topics will be addressed by Fatma Mansour and Sara Abu Ghazali, two amazing women who co-founded Shakmag. Uh, in their presentation, they will introduce Shakmag, the first feminist comic magazine in the Arab region. And they will tell us about the kind of stories Shakmag seeks to highlight the feminist vision behind the magazine and the way it reflects the current rising feminist movement in Egypt. Fatma Mansour is Yemeni Egyptian a feminist and gender consultant and Sara Abu Ghazal is a Palestinian feminist writer. The last uh, panel on the last presentation on this panel is uh, well, in a time of global misrepresentation, disinformation, and systemic uh, mendacity, we need more whistleblowers on mendacity and hypocrisy. Who else to turn to other than the bad girls? So the work of Nuri Flayhan, Rama Duwaji, and Dima Nashawi exemplify how graphic narrative envisions an everyday reality of women's lives, picturing what is often placed outside of public discourse. Their images tell stories that unsettle fixed subjectivity, presenting the self often in conflicting registers. In each of their work, we are shown the process 
of an author interpreting her experience, her memory, her trauma, her collections in a visual process. Through its hybrid and spatial form, this particular process of image making and storytelling lends itself to expressing narratives of development that present and underscore hybrid uh, subjectivity. So the bad girl's uh, fascinating work will be discussed in my presentation entitled Bad Girls Are the Best, Other Ways of Seeing in Relation to Identity, Construction, Resistance, and Resilience. So mark down your calendars for more on women telling stories about women and join us to a bit more than a week to find out more about how the bad girls and other daring graphic women broke conventional notions of feminine behavior images that tell stories can be a medium of criticism satire rebel and rebel against injustices <laughs> yeah. so, done. Okay. well done thank you so much yes me and that was lovely to hear your presentation we're going to move along and uh, leave all the questions till the end. Is that okay? All right. Well, let me introduce the next panel is um, Bahia Shad. And um, Bahia, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening from Cairo. Thank you to the 70 women and 40 men and our attendees i'm very i'm very like humbled that we have this turn out of so many women who are friends colleagues uh, people we've come across and uh, students it's amazing to have you all around us i i think we draw courage and uh, confidence in your presence and we hope that your participation will not be linked to joining us as uh, attendees, but also participating in our research, being part of the narrative, writing the narrative with us. So thank you all for being here. It's really an honor to be uh, with this amazing panel of women, Huda. Again, I want to repeat my thanks to you uh, for bringing us together and for uh, making this happen. Okay, so I'm going to be speaking about uh, the third uh, panel, which is... Um, um, which is... Um, yes, wait, who's, you're moving the slides, right? Yes, okay. <laughs> I have to wake up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. So, um, Actually, this this panel is a very close one to my heart because it's uh, it's something that has been bugging me since um, Haysam and myself published the book on uh, Arab graphic design, and uh, um, it, it was it's a beautiful project. I'm very proud of it, but it was always in the back of my mind: where are our women designers, and how can why didn't we collect them? And I felt very guilty about that. And so when Huda came forward, I was, uh, bit, I mean, over the moon to, to jump and, and uh, work with her and uh, Yasmin and Sukaina on this beautiful project. Um, so before, before we started with our research, I had set up a, a um, um, type lab, which is a research space concerned with the development and dissemination of Arabic letters, their history and their future. And so uh, part of the talk series I organized was, was called actually Ladies of Letters. And in that um, uh, talk series, I spoke to women who were designers, educators, uh, historians, who were uh, looking at the script, understanding the problem with me, and they helped me explore. So I will be presenting more on them or that panel or that talk series specifically because it sparked my curiosity for this panel and this chapter in the book, which is focused on the written world, which is to me a big part of our identity an integral part of our identity as women and as Arab designers, as, as people who inhabit uh, this part of the world, the letter has had significant me meanings historically. So I will introduce, introduce um, uh, my, my panelists, unlike uh, Yasmin, we will not have uh, clearly individual uh, um, presentations, but we will have a collective conversation together and we invite you to be part of that conversation. Nohao is a, is a brilliant historian uh, who, for me, her, her curiosity about um, um, the Mamluk Mus'haf, but also specifically, she's interested in looking at women calligraphers from the Mamluk era and looking at the evidence that they left and the patronage that they have done. 
بسمة has type Arabic, has set up type Arabic out of Qatar. She teaches at VCU Qatar. And to me, uh, as, as somebody who's also interested, she, uh, she co-authored also Worlds of Freedom and edited that. Um, so as a, an academic, a researcher, a, a scholar, a, an activist, to me, she, her um, view on, on the problem is also is going to be essential. The conversation and the ideas that she will be pu putting forward will be also quite essential. And for Yara, Yara again, as a, as a type design practitioner, as a uh, somebody who also published a history book on Nasri Khattar with Khat Foundation, um, she as and an educator who has been teaching Arabic typography, I think, uh, for over two decades. So she is somebody who's going to be again very valuable to the conversation. So I hope you can join us for that panel. It's going to be on the fourteenth of April, same time, um, uh, but in to two, three weeks, yeah? Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you, I'll move on to tell you now the story with the, with the Type Lab series. And it started on Women's Day in 2020. And um, I felt like I needed to pay tribute to, to, to the women in the field. And so we, 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 we featured these very small features of women type designers on, and cultural activists like uh, Huda Lara, Nadine Yara, uh, Lara, and Maha. so so. To, to me, it was just saying, these women exist, it's Women's Day, so let's celebrate them. And then this led to, um, um, next, yeah. The, this led to um, the next talk series, which is Ladies uh, of Letters. And this was monumental for me because I was always, uh, it, everything started actually by a piece of um, letter set, a, a letter set sheet that I found in an archive in Cairo. Uh, it, uh, uh, these letter, letter set sheets were beautifully um, designed. The, the characters were really, they really stood out to me. And every time I'd pick a sheet, I'd find the name Arlet Haddad on it. And I found I kept finding sheets and sheets of letters that, that had the name of Arlet Haddad. And, and this was from the 80s, and I had no idea who Arlet Haddad was. And so I started looking for Arlet, and I found her in London. She's now 70 years old, living in London, a Thai hermit. Uh, and her work is fascinating from the 80s. Everything she developed for uh, uh, letters was amazing. So I said, I think the first woman to speak should be our eldest. So we hosted Arlette for a talk. It was fascinating to hear from her. Uh, and then um, Yara and then um, Noha. But then I felt like I really needed to hear from the younger women designers who are who are practicing. So I invited Naima and Daza to have a conversation. And I think they needed two hours. They had such beautiful work. They had so much to talk about uh, uh, that we ran out of time and didn't have time to go through all the slides. But Noha talked about history. Yara talked about her work and her experience. Naima and Daza had a beautiful conversation. Uh, and to me, this started a, um, an, um, a narrative, uh, like I could see that they could come together easily in a book, possibly, or a project. Uh, but we had, I mean, these, these are just examples of the stories that, that took place and the activity. And then in the next slide, I... Um, uh, so uh, Sarah Shibel was working with me at the time, and, and she suggested the beautiful idea of stories. Uh, and we started contacting Maha, Farah, Noura, Nasreen, Sahar, and Angie. Some of them are not necessarily just type designers, but they are like brilliant designers who are doing amazing work that contains letters. And so we wanted to peek into their studios, and we asked them to send us recordings of, or answer a few questions, but to camera from their studio. So we had the talks on one hand where you, they're like the, key, the keynote uh, uh, talks of one hour with a specific uh, uh, designer or scholar. And then we had these really beautiful vignettes of small um, interviews by these amazing women designers who are doing amazing work all over the world on Arabic letters because, uh, uh, so they, they were not all from the Arab world, Sahar is from Iran. So this was beautiful bringing them together and looking at them uh, as a collective again. Uh, so this is this was another level to the communication. And then um, we were also featuring 
the speakers and the other designers with samples of their work on the page. So you would see, as you're scrolling through the timeline, you would see the speaker or the, the designer and then samples of the work next to them, uh, dated and uh, credited. And um, this is also Yara's book. And then there's also uh, the beautiful Lara uh, Aswad's uh, project. So, so again, even the women who could not be part of the conversation through talks or as recorded uh, uh, interviews, uh, one more, I think we have, yes, Lara. Uh, so Lara was, uh, I mean, all, those of, of them who could not uh, be part of it, I, we really pay tribute to them by including them and their work again during this month of July, which was the Ladies of Letters uh, month. Um, and so now um, to conclude my presentation, uh, Type Lab is a community that is bringing uh, people together. But I think one of the most exciting outcome of Type Lab was Ladies of Letters and my project here uh, is to continue that story that started uh, two years ago with the women community who came around and celebrated letters at the time. Uh, so I hope you will join us on the panel to talk about Arabic letters, to give us, uh, to listen to what our panelists will have to say, but also to contribute with your own stories. Thank you. Thank you, Bahia. You were too fast. <laughs> Normally people extend their time. Thank you very much. This was very nice to hear. And um, yes, I'm a big fan also of your, of your project. Um, okay, I move on to Sukaina. Thank think. you, Huda. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Sukaina, Hi, the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm really happy to be here and share with you from Casablanca. Um, when Huda approached me with the project, I was amazed and I, I thought it's a brilliant idea to um, reveal, record and, re record and reflect about these wonderful Arab designers uh, who are women and uh, have done so many amazing stuff. But I told her, I'm not a researcher. I don't know, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm a designer. And I started thinking how I could approach the project on my own way without the background of a researcher, but with the background of a designer. And um, I picked a subject that was very important for me uh, that I, I related to, um, uh, that is the creative process. Um, we all know um, the, 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 um, the last work or the final work of uh, all these ladies, uh, engaged ladies, uh, but we don't know how they come to uh, this final work and all the creative process behind. And I wanted to dig into that and specifically into image making. So, um, our uh, third panel will be image making behind the lines of engaged graphic design. Um, it, uh, it's not only about the process, it's also for me about the journey, uh, the growth journey of women through their work, through um, uh, revealing their work, uh, through addressing their communities, but also uh, their inner growth and their self journey towards a healing, towards education, towards um, success, towards anything, towards anything they want and they create through their, uh, their work. So it will address social engagement of women for sure in their context, um, but mainly uh, the journey behind these lines, these last lines, the, the, the drafts, uh, the, the, the cross lines, um, uh, the things that have been put aside or the things that they have left and the why behind. Because, um, you know, when you work on something, there's always something personal. For myself, uh, talking about creative process is very personal. I have always been intrigued about creative process. I have always been um, intrigued how we can um, transpose something personal into something um, that everyone can relate on or into something that has impact. And when you have social impact, 
this means that you have been through a long journey and I'm interested on that. Um, so uh, I have invited amazing ladies to accompany me um, to recall, record, unfold and reveal. Um, I'm gonna introduce them next. Um, we're gonna record, I'm gonna go back to the slide if you don't mind Huda. We're gonna record what is lost in translation, uh, the work before draft, the moments of questioning within the final work and all the journey that has been going um, from the moment of the ideation to the moment of the final work. We want to unfold and relate the space of personal change that the designer goes through as personal growth, as self-accomplishment, as spiritual growth, because I think we're all seeking in this world as a human being to accomplishment. And I think everyone through his work is working on this directly or indirectly. And because we are all seeking for that, somehow it, reson it resonates in the community. And uh, I think it's beautiful to share about it because these are the hidden lines. And then reveal the ongoing journey of social change through this consciousness, where we evolve from a me to a we, and where the, the impact is kind of like a wave going through. It's like um, a wave uh, of sound or a wave of water in the sea. And to do that, I'm happy because um, uh, these ladies, uh, panelist ladies have accepted to be part of this panel, to share this, uh, their experience. Um, I want to introduce uh, Lina, uh, Haide, uh, who is uh, an amazing uh, designer and also a researcher. Um, she's mainly a comic and animation artist living in Beirut, uh, but um, she will talk about uh, image making as well, her work, but also uh, her, giving her point of view as a researcher as well. Um, and as a researcher about Arabic comic uh, after the revolution and women, women in comics from the Arab world. Um, uh, we're gonna know more about her as a human, as a designer, uh, as a, uh, an activist, uh, but also as a researcher. Then uh, I have invited as well uh, uh, Ishraq, uh, Ishraq Bouzidi, uh, who is an uh, illustrator, uh, image maker and a sculptor. She does installation and painting, but she worked also uh, uh, in image making on women on identities, uh, on emotions, and she kind of um, uh, creates blur between past and uh, present uh, through um, uh, image of women, uh, grandmothers, today's girls, mothers, and she questions uh, a lot uh, the point of views, um, which is very interesting as uh, an image maker, I, I want to um, question her about her journey, how um, self-questioning went, uh, how uh, her uh, images resonate with her before resonating with the public. So she will be uh, attending. Hi. <laughs> Sorry for the disturbance. I introduced her to Khenfush, who is <laughs> kind of curious. So um, her work, uh, she will be um, intervening uh, as a designer mainly, and maybe um, uh, talking about her personal experience mainly. And then uh, Sara uh, Rizqalla, uh, who is a researcher, uh, she is a PhD, she has a PhD in sociology and social anthropology. So we have uh, here a more uh, specific background of research in sociology and entrepreneurship that we're going to have, um, which uh, will give us a background um, because uh, she already worked a lot on gender uh, in, uh, in Egypt and uh, Egyptian comics. Um, she has received multiple awards uh, and I think her experience as um, a researcher and her background in research will help us a lot. Um, our objective of this is uh, 
mainly to explore and reflect. Uh, I think it's very important to um, share the, the process because at a certain point, um, social media only share with us the final draft. We, and we don't see the struggle behind the work. We don't see the journey. We don't see how these women came up from, uh, with this work from their perspective, their history, their feelings, their journey. Um, and when you share this kind of information, it, it helps empower. It helps empower other designers. It helps empower um, uh, the public. It helps also create a new narrative uh, of uh, humanization, in humanization of the work. Um, so um, to do that, uh, especially for um, uh, an exploration of engaged lines, we want to understand the environment of the designer. And to, uh, to, to go into this environment, I, I would love to question some uh, personal uh, stories, uh, uh, present backstories, the workspace where they are, uh, the community with whom they interact, and maybe even the personal political, sociocultural environment where they grew up, because somehow this is uh, our anchor. Our uh, childhood is our anchor, our, um, uh, our uh, direct environment, the discussions of our grandmother with our mother, um, the interaction of our family and even with our friends. I I'm sure there is something that we carry on as a designer, as someone who wants to make a point through lines or a drawing or uh, an image that we carry on from the past and that reveal itself uh, in, uh, in a paper through an image. And this somehow is uh, hidden and impacts somehow uh, the community. Then the second lens um, that I want to explore is of course the social, cultural, political drive. What do we want to change? Do we come with the intention of changing? Do we come when we draw with this rage or drive or passion? How do we want to call it? Because each one has a different impact. Uh, one carries anger, another one carries love, another one can carry benevolence. And we can see it sometimes even in the, in the lines, um, whether it's maybe bold or light, uh, maybe with the colors, if it's dark or reddish or pastel. And um, of course, the materials, uh, the material and tools and documents that they go through to process that. Do, do I do research about other designers who did this? Or do I do it spontaneously? Or is there an influence? What are the influences? Um, I, I'm very curious about the way designer research and these women uh, graphic designer research, where do they go? Books, um, uh, websites, uh, social media. <laughs> and then maybe the third lens would be um, the journey. Go into the journey and discuss the intimacy of this journey. Um, I hope to invite a reflection on, on some intimacy, on some um, vulnerability. vulnerability. Uh, my English is a little bit bancal. <laughs> vulnerability. <laughs> and this experience with oneself can be through doubt, autocensure, questioning, um, uh, judgment. Um, and it's, it's really, uh, it's a very much a personal so, uh, journey where we get to know it uh, oneself. Uh, because when you're drawing, your mind is kind of active somehow. And th there are so many things going on. So I would love to understand where they, they draft the courage to share, or do they auto-sabotage themselves? Um, I would love to invade. Yes. Five minutes. Five minutes, of course. I'm almost done. Thank you, Huda. <laughs> I'm talkative. <laughs> I just would love to unveil personal anecdotes and maybe some philosophical thoughts and maybe some um, um, words that we can share with younger designers who are going through the same journey 
uh, and uh, who can um, understand how to be engaged and how to, to carry on on the journey. And then finally, to be more um, septic and un peu plus rooted, um, understand the tools and the choices. Um, what tools do they use to storytell their, um, uh, their narrative? Um, what are the choices of the styles, the, the poetics, the, 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 the stylistic, the, the drawing skills? Uh, all that is more of a brain, uh, mental uh, choice than an intuitive or emotional choice. Because there is kind of a balance between emotion and uh, uh, rational uh, choice making during the process. I think this is all. <laughs> thank you very much. I was so passionate about this. Uh, thank you, Huda. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your passion and all of you actually <laughs> so far. I mean, now I have to present after all three of you. I'm a bit intimidated. So I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to uh, be brief about my panel. Um, I think that what uh, what is what is really beautiful so far is to just listen to all of you and kind of like get you know so much of your personal interest into the research, which I think is really very important. Uh, you know the personality and the emotional part that goes into the work because sometimes. Um, um, research can be cold and I'm glad this is not a cold research we're talking about people we're talking about history that is not documented we're talking about um, amazing people we don't we know and some we don't and we want to discover and this is really very nice so I'm going to talk about my own um, panel which is kind of also about personal stories um, but then in a different way you know um, a lot of things that I've done in my life have also been really connected to my personal life um, or my personal experiences. I think that applies to all of us. And sometimes it's a chance, you know, it's a chance thing. You decide to uh, immigrate because you have to or you just want to or you're curious about the work. I'm a bit like, you know, the cats we saw joining us today, just curious. You know, I just want to go places I don't understand. And so this, my panel is going to be about um, women like myself who just find themselves living outside of their own context, out of their own culture, um, because they want to, or they have to, or you know, whatever, wherever life takes them. And it's very interesting when we talk about design. So the work is going to be really about women practicing outside of in, living in a diaspora, so living abroad, living away from their culture. And what does that mean to you as a designer, when you are trying to kind of understand a new context, trying to define your identity, trying to define your practice, because what you do, you know, when you practice within your culture, you practice very differently than when you practice somewhere else. Uh, there's a language barriers because we're talking about the Swana region. So all of us, we go somewhere where the language and the culture is very different. We assimilate, we don't assimilate completely. We are um, you know, in constant conversation with ourselves and with our culture. And this makes very interesting work. So we wanted, we wanted to also explore in this panel, you know, what, how women not only negotiate this, but how they reinvent their practice as designers. And maybe they don't really practice as graphic designers, but you can see their graphic design um, background and interest and, and um, um, practice as calligraphers or typographers and how they reinterpret that into a different context. So they might turn into fine arts, they might turn to fashion, they might turn into performance, they might start, you know, like I did, a, a foundation. So everyone has find their own way and find their voice and kind of redefine who they are. And this for me is an interesting way of looking at design, at graphic design as something that can be the basis for a very wide and very diverse and very um, um, diverse sort of practice, um, artistic practice. So I invited um, uh, four other wonderful researchers and designers and um, activists. And, um, and I would like to um, just introduce them very briefly to you. Um, so the first one is Dr. Roshan Akaro-Bodhi. 
And uh, Roshanak is living in New York and she's an educator, but she studied graphic design. She writes about graphic design also in Iran for a magazine called Nishan. But she also writes, you know, in general, and she's a scholar um, and has PhD in uh, design education. And when she started to practice, she moved away. And I, I love she taught me a, a Persian name that I unfortunately don't remember at the moment, which is typical for me. <laughs> but it was it was an expression. I think it's called honar, and it, honar means art and the art of something like the art of cooking, the art of drawing, the art, you know, the art of life, actually. And I, I love, um, you know, how she explained it and how she kind of uh, talked about her work evolving and going with, you know, using the material of graphic design, but then creating work that is speaks for itself, that speaks about experience, that is explores, that is this in-betweenness. So we want to investigate in this panel and each one of us in different, in their own way, this in-betweenness, this being between cultures, between, uh, between uh, identities, between practices, what do we do? How do we practice graphic design or do we call it graphic design? And so this in-betweenness, this, this gray area is what we will explore. Um, the same, I would like to introduce Ghalia Srak. Being Ghalia is originally from Syria, she studied in Damascus, then she came to the Netherlands and actually did her design studies in the Netherlands. And now she lives in Cairo and she's teaching at the American University in Cairo and she started Chirotronics. And she started when she was in the Netherlands, she started the collective with uh, another fantastic woman uh, who's from South Africa and they have a collective called Foundland. And Lauren uh, is, is also a wonderful uh, activist, so the, who was also coming from South Africa to live in the Netherlands. So this idea for them is, you know, even the name of their collective is really meaningful. It's a found land. They, they found a collective, but they found also a land that is their own. And in their practice, it's very research-based practice where they do investigations on topics that are about identity, that are about migration, that are about political uh, agendas, or that are about feminism. But then they, you know, they explore them in different ways. And you can see from some examples here that I'm showing that there is a very strong graphic design language there, but they are not producing what we call graphic design. There's no client, there's no it's not within the same framework. And this in-betweenness, their, their found land is very interesting to explore. And I'm sure that Raya will, will, will elaborate on this better than I do. Then um, I uh, also invited Dina Ben Brahim. Dina Ben Brahim is also teaching in the US and living in the US. She's a writer, she's a, a staunch feminist. And uh, she will talk about her project and you know, also her journey of leaving Morocco and starting a new life and a new identity and kind of exploring you know, what design means to her and how she practices it and how she teaches it and what it means to be a Moroccan woman that decided to live in the US. And she will talk about her journey uh, in more elaborate ways. And I think that um, you know, this idea of seeking plural narratives of kind of being lost and finding yourself and reinventing yourself and reinventing how you work is very important in this panel. And the last uh, um, panelist will be uh, Maya Mumni. Maya Mumni is one of two. So here you see them in the corner, the two of them. With Hatim Imam, she founded Studio Safar. And Studio Safar is, um, is a wonderful design studio in the traditional sense of the design studio. But then they started um, at some point making publications that are independent. And Maya is very much into these publications. And one of their uh, publication called Journal Safar started as a kind of like exploration of, you know, like a play playground for exploring different, uh, different ways of, of uh, making magazines. But eventually it became something else. And I think she will. Ex she um, recently launched also a new uh, magazine called Haya, which means living, but in the feminine sense. And Haya is also in the Lebanese slang snake, but I'm not sure if this is the fun that was meant. But she uh, will talk about that more elaborately in the thing. So I don't have an image of it because I think it's still not out there. Um, so Maya will be a great, um, also will we'll, we'll talk about her journey 
Um, she's also recently, um, she's, she's Canadian Lebanese and she recently located to Canada. And it's also this idea of, you know, being, being in two places because the studio, her studio is still in Beirut. So she's always like between, physically between two worlds. So what does that mean? And what does that to, do to you other than being all the time tired and jet lagged? So she will discuss that more elaborately. Um, so I'm very brief with my thing. I don't have a lot of explanation to do. I want to also leave a lot of space for us to have a discussion together and to also listen to the questions from the audience if there are questions or comments. Um, but I want to wrap this, this presentation by saying that, you know, the, the idea of the, of the exhibition is really important and that um, we are very, I mean, I am now didn't say that I was in Berlin, but I am in Berlin um, at um, A to Z Presents, which is the gallery of Anja Lutz, who's hosting us. Um, Anja and myself, we sat, I mean, the project was cooked up. We were sitting, listening to a presentation by Bahia. And, you know, she was talking about her book on Arab graphic women, uh, Arab graphic design. And then she turned in the middle and said, oh, I see you in the audience. So that we should make a book about women. And then I thought, wow. And there was Anya in the audience, which was very unusual. I mean, it was a kind of audience as in like the platform we're in here, a Zoom presentation. And then I, I knew Anya for a long time with his friends and, and, you know, we've always wanted to do a project together. So there it was, like, it just clicked, you know, three women with like very, very strong personality, very different, but very also very much thinking ah, we could do something together. So when we met like a few days later and we said, let's do this project. And then so the ball started rolling and then it developed what it is. So I want to thank Anya for, for, um, for hosting me here, for, for being here, for making a wonderful exhibition that um, hopefully if you, you will get to see. Um, the exhibition, the idea, you know, the exhibition will run until the 19th of May. So if you happen to be in Berlin, but in the meantime, we also set up um, an Instagram account. So we'll post some images of it. And the idea of this exhibition is not a final thing. It's like a working space um, where people can come, add things, contribute, uh, put notes, ask us questions, bring information. So we started kind of a wonderful wall. So I'm gonna show you a little bit what it looks like. It looks like, you know, um, we started in the beginning thinking like, mm, how many people we're gonna end up with and just, you know, between ourselves and then our networks and the networks that grew and grew and grew. We have at least a thousand women we can write about, which is really amazing. I mean, it's it's so heartwarming. Um, but you know, we can't include everybody. So that was also why we have to see how we're going to manage all this. So we have lots of ideas on how to include everybody without including everybody in one book. But we'll talk about that when we get further into this project. But in the meantime, like Bahia said also, and, and I say it again, you know, we welcome you know, to, for everyone who is in, in the audience now, but also everyone in the future to engage in the research, visit the space. If you cannot visit the space, send us, you know, suggestions, names of people that are your heroes, your heroines, um, you know, links to female graphic designers, calligraphers, typographers, illustrators that you think are really important, have a, you know, made an impact into, into your life or that you would like to know more about even. Um, you know, one thing that social media helps us is we find a lot of people like our generation and younger. But what about, you know, like the story of our let, you know, the older generation, the women that, you know, we go into a, a secondhand bookstore in Cairo, we pick up a book and we love the cover, but we have, we know it's a woman who designed it, maybe by mistake, but we don't know actually. So who are these women? We want to know. So anybody who has stories, this is a kind of like, um, I would say it's more like an, um, yeah, like it's not, it's a research project, but it's also a journey of discovery. And I hope that you will join us on it. So send us your suggestions anytime you something pops into your head. Um, I would also want to wrap this up in a formal way and thank all the people um, that need to be thanked and that we have not thanked or talked about. First, I want to start by thanking all the audience and people that have registered and all 
the people that could not register or could not attend because of time difference or whatever, wherever you are in the world, all the wonderful women making beautiful work. We love you. And we want, we want to thank you for, and we hope that you keep on doing beautiful work. Um, I would also like to thank our supporters so far. Um, so this is the formal part, the Khat Foundation, Center for Arabic Typography, the Arab Fund for Arts and Culture, and ACSS, the Andrew Mellon um, Foundation, and A to Z Presents. But I also should not forget, I would like to thank um, the interns that have actually designed this exhibition and worked really day and night. So I would like to uh, thank Noor Asmar for doing such a beautiful identity for us. It is so lively, so beautiful, so fresh, and we love it. Um, so thank you, Noor. And I would like to also um, thank Lisa Goebling, um, our German uh, intern who's with Noor, have been working day and night, putting this exhibition, making prints, doing some research. And I hope that they continue doing research and that they continue helping us uh, build, you know, um, a denser and denser walls full of wonderful work. So thank you, everybody. Um, we love you. <laughs> and now I want to open <laughs> the floor for questions, or if we want, we can also ask questions to each other. So you can switch on your microphones and if you like, my dear friends, my panelists, do I switch you on? No, no, we're here. You're here, okay. Anybody who wants to ask a question from the audience have to put it in the Q&A, otherwise. Somebody, uh, yeah, somebody's asking, uh, how do you register for all the panels? And you'll find all the links on the A to Z page uh, yeah. and register for all of them from there. But can you please uh, uh, maybe put the link, the A to Z link in the chat? Yes. Bahia, do you have it? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. It's a good idea. Good idea. We also, you can also visit the Instagram page of uh, the project. Um, maybe somebody can put it in the in the chat because we will every um, we will announce every panel at the time so you can always register later and the link will be in the bio of the project so that link might will change once this panel is done da, 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 etc wow we have a silent audience i think they're in awe <laughs> <laughs> thank you lina we have Thank a message you. from Lina Reve. Oh, <laughs> Hi, magnificent, Lina. brilliant project. Salutation to all you ladies and women, <laughs> women out there. <laughs> Lina, I love you. Okay, so here's the link to where you can register. So maybe as a reminder, so maybe... we can say that the panels uh, will all be at 7 uh, p.m. Uh, uh, all of them will be on a Thursday, is it? Yeah, Huda? this is every, yeah, it will be uh, almost every th Thursday, every two weeks. So the next panel is going to be Yasmin's panel. It will be next, this coming Thursday, next week, Thursday at 7 p.m., same time. Uh, on March 24th. Yes. And so maybe then Bahia can say the date of her panel. But she already did. It's April 14th. And then Sukaina, just as a reminder, it's the date. The 28th of April. And Huda is the last one that will be in May? Yes, May 12th. And then we have a closing uh, panel with the four of us again on the 19th of May. Um, we have a thank you all from Roshanak in New York. Um, yes, Lina, the, the panels will be recorded. They will be live streamed on YouTube and will be recorded and posted also. So we can use them as educational material. So they will be posted on the, uh, the A to Z website or the re revealing, which, you know, where will they be posted, the panels, the recorded panels? I think both. The gallery and the uh, the yeah, the revealing the conference yeah. Okay, 
Uh, we get things in the chat, but no questions. So I guess um, we might end up ending the session really early. Is there anything you want to say as a final word? I, it's I not a final word, the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds terrible. Um, um, basically, just join us. Kira is asking you all to come and oh. write the research. <laughs> 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 Bring your cats next time. <laughs> there will be a lot to discuss during the panels. So, yeah, I guess maybe we can leave. We have a very important question. It's yes, a trick, it's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seems like this. We all have cats. No. <laughs> no, but some of us that don't have cats are actually cats. Cats in the body. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, for this uh, thing. I think I, I, the questions and all the excitement will come with every other panel when the discussions get more hot. Um, it is really nice to have you, uh, Yasmin, Bahia, Sukaina. It was really lovely talking to you, and I wish we could have been physically in the same space, but... Um, this is as good as it gets. On the other hand, this has advantages that we can be with so many people in, uh, mm -hmm. from in different time zones, in different countries at the same time. So thank you again. And um, yeah, stay in touch. And we see you next week. Uh, Yasmin will be coming also. Bye. <laughs> Yasmin will also be coming to, to Berlin, so we will be together in Berlin for briefly. Oh, wait, we have a very good question, I think. Let me see. One question, a long one. I'll read it out loud. Um, hi, I'm currently doing my bachelor. This is Habiba Ashaj. Uh, the context of my research is to discover and unleash the role of Arab female graphic designers and how they employ, use their design in empowering women of the region. As I'm researching, I've read Dr. Bahia's History of Arab Graphic Design, which is quite important, but even the only book about Arabic graphic design's history, uh, which includes four women only. That's true. Which is what, why what you're doing now is very important as an inspiring, as an aspiring graphic designer. Do you want to answer her, Bahia? No, I think she's just stating, I don't think, it I, th I don't think that there's a question, right? Not really, but I mean, it's... But thank you so much, Habiba. It's very sweet of you. Thank you, everyone, for your words of encouragement. There's also very sweet comments from Naima, from Lina, from Melody. Thank you so much, Melody. Najla, Badran. There, thank you, everyone. This is so heartwarming. It's amazing. All your comments are lovely. I hope you can really join us. Uh, I don't think we're only getting uh, like love and support. We're not getting yeah, a question. So beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful to start finally the project. We've been uh, yeah. having this internal c connection and talks and discussions, and now it's on. It's beautiful. Oh, there's one person I really want to thank. I think that she's the godmother of our project, and that's Dr. Nada Shavut. Uh, Nada is an, an amazing person. If anybody doesn't know her, you should look her up. She's an amazing scholar, a very generous person, a good friend, warm, and she's the godmother of our project. So um, she wrote me that you know very nice email before I came, and I just want you to... Um, to just feel her energy and her love on this panel, even though she's not with us. So thank you. Thank you. And um, now it's for us time to go celebrate with a real guest out in the gallery. <laughs> Enjoy the gallery. With us. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Lots of love. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night.